I just shared that with you. Okay, I'm going to start us with the. Uh, yeah. Start with our uh, sponsors, okay? And then hopefully that will give us a chance for the other guys to get on a bit. Okay. Uh, some of the others who aren't at Minion aren't here either. We'll see. Okay, Year of Learning, Dr. Paul Konigsberg, the memory of his brother, Dr. Sam Konigsberg, Shimon Rubin Ben Leibush, and Ed Goldberg's cousin, Nisan Hara, Nisan Ben Fardosa, Paula and Bob Bromberg, the memory of their dear friend, Julian Smith, Yehuda Ben Yisrael. Malka Mann, in memory of her family murdered in the Holocaust. Harav Tzvi Hirsch ben Shlomo Yaakov, Sarah Bat Ephraim, Yisrael ben David Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Ephraim ben Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Adia Bas Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Miriam Bat Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Pesel Bat Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Shalom ben Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Shlomo Yaakov ben Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Shmuel ben Harav Tzvi Hirsch. Many friends of Dr. Marvin Blush, Moshe Shalom ben Yitzchak Halevi, friends of Toby Paris, Sarah Tova Bat Yisrael Dov, which reminds me I spoke with uh, Sid and he's be, going to be coming down uh, very soon. Uh, friends of Malka Levi, Malka Bat Yosef, uh, friends of Avi Gitler, Avra Meir Ben Shimon, Cheryl Sher, her children and grandchildren, memory of her uncle, founding member of BRS, Dr. Israel Brook, Yisrael Ben Arav Akiva. Marsha Federbush and family, the memory of her husband, Dr. Oriel Paul Federbush, Oriel Ben Harav Shimon. A month of learning by Phyllis and Chaim Reis, uh, in memory of her father, Pinchas Ben Avraham. And uh, that looks like it for today. Shemas have an Aliyah, Crank or Afia, Valti Yashir, Shema Talia, Lachol Ben Israel, a good Gabench Tiar. Okay. All right. Morning, Ted. Morning. Good morning. Okay. All right. Kaf Dalit Amud Aleph, I believe, is where we're starting. Okay, we finished up with the Gemara, talking on the very top of the Amud, V'im Eino Inyan La'achila, Taneu Inyan La'isur Hana'a. That's where we stop, implying if you can't teach it with one area, teach it theoretically in another. Right. Now, as we pick up in the Gemara, we're going to see the uh, a little bit more discussion on this topic. And then uh, Gemara is going to uh, pick up, uh, I guess I'll call it a challenge. And from that challenge, continue some additional uh, issues. Line two, okay, on Kaf Dalet Amud Aleph. A, okay, so the Gemara picks up there. I ma kan b'sreifa, av kol ha'isurin shebatorah sreifa. Okay, trying to draw the parallel that uh, if you can apply it to these particular items, like the chometz having to be burnt, particularly remember Rabbi Yehuda's view was that that was the only way to destroy the Chomets. Okay, right? What that, doesn't that apply to other items that are prohibited in the Torah? Okay, particularly the example we saw, remember that was raised, was Chulin Shinishkatu Ba'azara. Okay, if that's the case, uh, shouldn't those also, if that happens, be burnt, since that's an Esau? Okay. Amar Kra, says the Gemara, 
in response. Okay, Bakodesh Baish Tesaref. Okay, implying okay that in regards to certain consecrated items, okay, that uh, if there is a let's say Esau connected with them, they need to be burnt. Ve'en kol isurin but not necessarily, okay, all the other prohibited items mentioned in the Torah. They do not need to be destroyed or eliminated through burning. Okay, and so the Gemara picks up, v'hai v'kodesh ba'es to saref. Okay, but doesn't the right, Torah nevertheless say, that in regards to the holy items, in other words, we could interpret holy here regard, regard being a reference to the makom, to the place, to the temple precinct, and not necessarily to the sacrifices themselves, which would seem to imply again that chulin shenishchata ba'azara would need to be burnt. So that's part of the question of the challenge, okay? Lahachi hudaata. For what purpose then does it come, right? Hai mibayale like the Rabbi Shimon. It's needed according to the view of Rabbi Shimon. The Tanya Rabbi Shimon Omer says Rabbi Shimon, right? Bakodesh baish tisareif. Right within the holy, right or okay, the it we learn that it has to be burnt. Okay, what does that tell us? We made al chatat shesorfin otab kodesh. Okay, Rabbi Shimon is saying, what does it refer to? Specifically, a chatas offering. Okay, that if there's a problem, so to speak, with that. Okay then that has, can only be eliminated through burning. Ve'enli ele zo bilvad, said Rabbi Shimon. And that's the only example, says that I established, of something that has to be burnt in the temple precinct, in the courtyard. Psule kadshe kadoshin, ve'emure kadoshin, kalin minayim. How do we know, raises this statement, that something that has become uh, uh, an invalid uh, Kodesh Kodeshim, an invalid sacrifice, or even those parts of the animal that uh, are normally immerim, okay, that, that they normally are eaten and something happens to them, they become invalid, okay? How do I know that they should be burnt as well? What's the basis? Okay. Talmud Lomar, the kol bakodesh ba'es tesaref. Here we understand, okay, that it could imply any item that is in the kodesh. Again, understanding that not as specific sacrifices, as Rabbi Shimon did, but in the place of the uh, base of Mikdash in the precinct, it has to be burnt. So we have a response now to that. Amale Rabbi Yonatan, says Rabbi Yonatan, okay, to the first one. Rabcha, your teacher, okay? So in other words, Rabbi Yonasan, who was your teacher, responding to the person who made the drasha, namely Rabbi Shmuel ben Nachman, may hai kra ka'amarla. Okay? From what pasuk, okay, does he derive this? Right? And what's his basis? Right? That he says that the uh, chomets, or for example, that uh, the ox, all right, has to be burnt. Namely, he says, "Mehai kra ka'amarla, ve'im yivater mi besar hamiloim, u'min halechem ad haboker v'gomer." 
And if there be left over from the flesh of the offering or from the bread in the morning, the implication is it's holy and it's left over should be burnt. She'em Talmud Lomar Lo Yachel, that the text doesn't tell us it should not be eaten. Okay, why? Because it tells us it should be burnt. Uma Talmud Lomar Lo Yachel, and whereas the text of the Torah tells doesn't say, okay, it should not be eaten. Im eno inyan lagufe. If it's not for this itself, okay, the ha ktiv visarafta et hanotar baesh. Why? Because we have another pasuk that says specifically, and you shall burn what's left over with fire, okay, implying anything left over clearly is burnt. If you say that, why then do you have to have the phrase lo yeachel, right? Tenehu inyan l'shar isurin shebetora. Therefore, teach it regarding the other prohibited items referred to in the Torah. Yeah, those are the okay. Again, trying to apply it to other things, namely our example of the chametz and Pesach, and uh, what's left over the ox that was uh, sentenced to be stoned. And furthermore, says the Gemara, ve'im eno inyan la'achila, if it's not regarding the prohibition of eating, tenehu inyan le'isur hana'a, teach it then for the prohibition of benefit. Okay? Now, Gemara picks up here, right? And it continues and raises the following uh, challenge, okay? And this is what it says. A ma kan b'sreifa af l'kol isurin sheba Torah b'sreifa. Okay? If that's the case, right, he's saying, right, then why doesn't it apply to all other examples of prohibitions are mentioned in the Torah. Okay. Amar Kra, but we have a Pasuk that says, Visarafta et hanotar. Okay. That specifically, explicitly may limit the burning of Kodesh to something that's left over. Notar, Bisrefa. That which is left over, okay, is to be burnt. Ve'en kol isurin shebetorah b'sreifa. Okay, but not all of the other prohibitions, okay, are in the Torah are to be destroyed by burning. So the Gemara now comes back, right? And it says the following. V'hai lo ye'achel. If that's the case, then the phrase, it should not be eaten, what does it come for? What's its purpose? Okay. Right? It's needed, right? Namely, for the explanation of Rabbi Elazar. The Amar Rabbi Elazar, Lo Yeachel, why? Because Rabbi Elazar says the following, right? That when it says, lo yeochel ki kadosh hu, that uh, the text that says it shall not be eaten for it's holy, right? Kol shebekadesh pasu. Namely, anything that is holy is disqualified. Okay? Ba hakatuv litain lo ta'ase al achilato. That in that case, the verse comes to tell us that it is a love, a negative command, in regarding its consumption, its being eaten. Okay? And so therefore, we cannot use it for 
as Rabbi Yonatan did for his attempt to say burning applies to all other prohibitions in the Torah, specifically our two examples. Now, okay. However, what happens? Amar Abaye. Abaye now is going to come back to a previous discussion, okay? Namely, the one we had with Rabbi Yoshua ben Levi. Le'olam <coughs> mikra kama ve'ipuch. Okay? Namely, maybe we're talking about the question of deriving benefit from the prohibition of chomets or from the ox, right? As we saw before. Delichtov be'esh to saref, Right? that maybe then, okay, okay, I'm sorry, right, ve'ipuch, and reverse it, right? Reverse Rabbi Yehoshua ben Levi's uh, reasoning, his understanding. Delichtov ba'esh to saref. And by doing so, right, the Torah should have said it should be burned in fire. V'lo bai, lo te'ocheu. And then we wouldn't need the phrase telling us it should not be eaten. Okay. Ma tamud lomar lo ta'achel. So then what's the purpose of the Torah using the phrase here it should not be eaten? Im eno inyan lagufo. If it's not for that particular subject, the nafkale mi de rabbi elazar, that we've learned, okay, from the previous drasha of Rabbi Elazar, Tenehu Inyan, the Kol Isurim Sheba Torah, then teach it for the other prohibitions in the Torah. Again, namely our two key examples, Chomets and the uh, ox to be stoned. Ve'im eno Inyan la'achila, and if it does not, then deal with the topic of eating, teneu inyan le'isur hana'a, then teach it as applied to a prohibition of benefit. Now, Gemara is still trying to clarify this issue, right? But it continues. E ma kan b'sreifa, af kol isurin b'sreifa. If that's the case, if these would be prohibited or eliminated, let's say, by burning, then so likewise all these other prohibitions in the Torah, okay, would also be eliminated by burning. But the Gemara then continues, Amakra, but the verse said, Ha no tar, that which was lim- left over, telling us, Hanautar b'sreifa, that that which is left over from the Kodesh has to be burnt. Ve'en kol isurin shebetorah b'sreifa, and not the other prohibited items in the Torah to be eliminated by sreifa. Now, Amarle Rav Papa la'abaye. So Rav Papa wants to challenge what Abaye is, is teaching. Ve'ema. And I would say, okay, li yichudei le lav le gufei huda'ata. Okay, in other words, he's trying, Rav Papa is saying, okay, that this comes to specifically designate here a lav, a negative prohibition, okay, a negative commandment for that item itself. That's why it comes. De e mi de Rabbi Elazar, because if we're basing it on the explanation of K of against the Khatas that Rabbi Eliezer gave, right? Okay, what would happen? Ain Lokin a love shabiklalut. That one we have a general principle that says we do not bring. Malchus on somebody who uh, on, who is over 
on a, let's call it a general love, okay? A generalized prohibition, okay? So what, what does that mean? It's a love that covers multiple items, okay? That's what we're talking about. And if you can't, don't even require Malchus on that, then how can you say, right, that uh, that it applies to uh, the prohibition of the chametz or of the uh, ox? El Amar Rav Papa, <clears throat> but rather Rav Papa says, Mehacha, let it. Maybe we can derive it from this example, right? Habasa Asher Yiga Bechol Tame. Lo ye achel. Okay, namely saying that flesh that comes in contact with any contaminated thing, right, cannot be eaten. What must it be done? It must be, of it's course, burnt, right? Okay, and namely, im eno inyan lagufo. And again, we say if it doesn't apply specifically to this case, why? Because we might be able to learn this based on a kal v'chomer, okay? Namely, if we take an example of tithing, which is a lesser sancti sanctified item, and whereas tithing, right, or the tithe that is a lesser of sanctity. Amra Torah, the Torah tells us, lo ba'arti mimenu betameh, okay, that clearly it says it did not consume it, destroy it when one is in a state, state a condition of tumor. Basar Kodesh, okay, sanctified meat, chamor, which is of a higher sanctity, lo kol shekain. <clears throat> How much more so? Okay, is that the case? So the Gemara then continues, tema, and if you want to say that this is kal v'chomer is not strong enough, why? Ein mazhirin min hadin, that we don't make warning, okay, in regard to a prohibition not to do something based on a kalva chomer, okay? Hekeshahu. Maybe we'll say that we'll make instead a different kind of an associative connection between it, an analogy, okay? And the following, dechtiv, why? Because it's written, lo tuchal le'echol b'sha'arecha, Ma'asar dagancha tiroshcha v'yitzarecha u'bechorot bekarcha v'gomer. The pasuk says you may not eat, okay, in your cities, namely outside Jerusalem, the tithe of your grain, the oil, wine, firstborn cattle, etc. Okay, and if we make that connection, okay, we can do it to the following. Whereas the where the text tells us that it's not permitted to be eaten, okay, and that love, okay, there doesn't apply in that case, right? Tinehu in Yan Lakol Isurin Torah then let's teach it in regards to other prohibitions in the Torah. And if it doesn't apply to the prohibition of eating, because it already said, teach it then in regards to benefit, the prohibition of benefiting. Now, A, Makan Bisrefa, of kol isurin shebatorah b'sreifa, and therefore again we try to come to the conclusion, the same way. These other items 
prohibitions are destroyed, eliminated through burning. So therefore, all of the prohibitions in the Torah, including our example of chametz and our example of the ox, right? Think the hide of the ox, destroyed through burning. However, again, we challenge that when we say, Amar Kra, but the Pasuk says, Hanotar, that which is left over is to be burnt. Hanotar b'shreifa ve'en kol isurin shebetorah b'shreifa. But not all of the prohibitions in the Torah. So again, that seems to be uh, emphasizing for us that when it says referred to Kodesh, again, it's clearly limiting it perhaps to sacrifices. Okay, and certainly chametz is not a sacrifice. And we know with the ox too, it's problematic if one were to try to do something with it. Okay, after it's been sentenced to be stoned. Now, Amali Ravina le Rav Ashi. We now come to the following. It says Ravina to Rav Ashi. The Ema la Avor Alav Bishne Lavin. He says, What about the fact, okay, here that it seems to say that you have two prohibitions, right, that is being transgressed? Okay, one, okay, is the prohibition of not eating. The other, okay, is this issue of comparing it to tithing. Love, mi amar abaye, okay, but isn't that what abaye is, isn't that not what abaye is telling us? In the following example, achal potita lo ke arba. In other words, can you have multiple acts of of um, of um, malkot for the same behavior. But we've learned elsewhere. <clears throat> if one were to eat this potita, which is a kind of water snail, he would get four sets of malchus. Okay. Why? Because it's prohibited as a sharetz, it's prohibited to be eaten, etc., etc. Nimala, if one were to eat an ant, lokechamesh, he would get five sets. Okay, because again, we have prohibitions against eating a sheretz, eating whether it's a water animal, whether it's a land animal, things like that. And we go over to the next Amud, Sira, if he were to eat a hornet. Okay, Lokeshesh, he would get six sets of Malchus. Okay, because again, we've got prohibitions of eating a Sheretz, right? And a flying animal. So that's another one, because a hornet can both crawl and fly. And then we've got prohibitions again, right? All of these. Amarle. So in other words, trying to prove that you could have multiple malchus for the same uh, misbehavior. So he responds, Rav Ashi then responds to Ravina, kol hecha deika lamidrash darshinen. Okay, wherever we can expound a new law from the verse, so we make the effort to expound it. Velo mokminen belav yetire but we don't establish it as additional prohibitions. Okay, now, <clears throat> we're gonna come back now to uh, a little bit more of our discussion from Rav Papa and Abaye. Okay? Vahabasa asher yiga bechol tame lo yocha. Okay? So arts are pasuk. And here, our term tame, okay, is really something that's capable of becoming tame. 
darshinen. Lamali, why do we make any kind of a drasha on this? Okay. Namely, l'rabot etzim ulevona. Okay. That we can derive from this that there are other items, including, for example, wood or the incense, that these items are also capable of becoming tame, right? Vahabasar, kol tohar, tahor, yochal, yeochel, I'm sorry. And anything that is yochal, right? Vahabasar, kol tahor, yochal, okay? The fact that it refers to meat again, basar de sefa, lamali, why do I need the word basar there in that pasuk, right? And if we look at on 24b1, note three, okay, you'll see it cites the whole pasuk there. Vahabasar asher yiga bechol tame lo yeachel. Okay, that's the first part of referring to the flesh. It's not to be eaten. Ba'esh yisareif, it should be burnt. That's what we were darshaning before. But here's the end of the pasuk. Vahabasar kol tahor yochal basar. And the flesh that shall be eaten when we eat the flesh. So you have the word basar actually a total of three times in the Pasuk, right? So why the X, why the extra word Basar, he's asking, okay? Basar de Sefe, Lamali, why? The Rabot Imurin, that includes the Imurin, those parts of the animal that ordinarily sacrificial parts, okay, that would be burnt on the Mizbeach and uh, are prohibited from really being eaten. Imurim mehatam nefka. But the Imurim, we can learn that prohibition from elsewhere. To Tanya, okay, as taught in the Brayta, v'hanefesh esher tochal basar, mezevach hashlamim, asher l'ashem, okay, from that pasuk that the person who eats flesh, right, from the zevach hashlamim, from the uh, offerings, divine offerings, right, to Hashem. What happens to that person, okay? He'll be result in karet, right? So what happens? Le rabot et ha'emorim. That comes to include the emarim, that pasuk. So the Gemara says there, hatam tumat haguf bekaret. There, that pasuk comes to tell us that the uh, contact, the contamination, okay, of that item results in the punishment of karet. Hacha tumat basar belav. But here, our pasuk that we cited, namely Vahabasar Kol Tahar Yochal Basar, comes to tell us, okay, that when the poor person eats uh, something that's tame meat, what happens? They get malchus because there's a love. Now, Amar Rabbi Abahu. Amar Rabbi Yochanan. Kol Isurin Sheba Torah, all of the prohibitions in the Torah, Ein Lokin Ela Derech Achilatan. Rabbi Abahu, in the name of Rabbi Yochanan, saying all these other prohibitions in the Torah do not, uh, as love, don't result in a punishment of Malchus unless they're I'm going to say, eaten in a normal manner. Okay. Lema'ute mai. This comes to exclude what? Amar Rav Shimei Bar Yashi, he says. Lema'ute she'im achal chelev chai shepator. 
This comes to exclude the fact that if he were to eat raw fat, he would be exempt. Okay? Ikeda Amri. And there are those who present an, another ver version of it. Amar Rabbi Abahu, Amar Rabbi Yochanan. This is Rabbi Abahu in the name of Rabbi Yochanan. Kol Isurin Sheba Torah. All the prohibitions in the Torah. Ein lo kina lehem, ele derech hana'atan. One doesn't give them malchus, okay? Except in a situation, right? Where they enjoy it, where they benefit from it in the normal manner. Lema'ute mai, to exclude what? Amar Rav Shimei Bar Ashi, lema'ute she'im hiniach chalav shel shor haniskal al gabe makato shehu pator. This comes to exclude that if he takes the fat from the ox that was sentenced to be stoned, and he puts it, uses it as a, a bandage, a compress on a wound, okay? Namely, that he is not liable. The kol shekein, ochel chai shehu pator. Ochel chalav chai shehu pator. And all the more so if he were to eat raw fat, okay? Uh, why, why, would, should there be, why should there be this kol shechein? Okay. You would think that... No, it's, uh, it's, it's just... And it was our first lesson of Rabbi Abba, who simply said right. about the eating. So now he's giving a further example. Not only can't you use it, simply benefit from it by making it uh, heal a wound, but right. certainly, even if you were to eat it, you would be exempt. Uh huh. Right. Okay. Okay. All right. So it's just uh, the second lesson. Itmar Nami. It was also said the following. Okay, by other Amorim. Amar Rav Achabar Avia. He says Rav Achabar Avia. Okay. Amar Rabbi Asi. Amar Rabbi Yochanan. Okay. All the following. Hiniach Chelev Shal Shur Haniskal. Al gabe makato patur. Okay, that if one put the fat, right, from the uh, ox sentenced to be stoned on his wound, he's exempt, right? He's not liable. The fisha kol isurin shebetora ein lokin alehen ela derech hanaatan. But rather because all of the prohibitions in the Torah, okay, where there's a lav, Right? We do not punish them with malchus, except if there is a normal use for them of benefit. Okay? Now, since we cited Rabbi Abahu's example of Rabbi Yochanan, Gemara is going to uh, continue with that. Amar Rabbi Zera says, Rabbi Zera af anan nami teninan. So we also learn something similar. Namely, Ein sofkin et arba'in mishum orla. Okay, what is he telling us here? That someone does not, let's say, uh, suffer, receive, okay, the lashes. Malkut, remember, is 40 lashes minus one, 39, in regards to drinking some sort of liquid that is prohibited because of produce that is orla. Ela al hayotse min hazetim u min ha'anavim bilvad. Okay? With the exception of liquid that may come from olives, okay? Or that may come from uh, grapes. The ilu mituti, but if it were to come from berries, taenim from figs, rimonim or from pomegranates, okay, lo, what no, one would not receive malkut in there. Mai tama, what's the reasoning? Lav mishum de lo ka'achil, 
Laho derech hana'atan. Okay, isn't it, shouldn't we be saying, aren't they in eating it as a means of normal part of deriving benefit? Amarle Abai. Abai answers the following. Bishlema, that's understandable. I ashmeinen pre gufa. If we're talking about the fact that it taught in regarding to the fruit itself. Delo ka'achile derech hana'atan shapir. Okay, that basically one didn't eat that or la fruit in that situation in a normal manner to derive benefit. That's why he's patur, he's exempt from getting lashes, and that's well. Ela hacha, but here, mishum dezea ba'alma. Here we're talking about the moisture, uh, secretions like juice that come off the fruit. That's a different situation. That's okay. And therefore, that would be uh, deriving benefit from the orla fruit. And therefore, one would be subject, ought to be subject to Malchus. Amar Abaye, hakol modim, Beklai hakerem shalokim. Okay. Now, another case. I'll agree, he says, that uh, in this case, regarding klai kerem, right, that one would get malchus for benefiting from them. Alehen afilu shalok derechana atan. Okay. Even if we're saying. It's not done in the normal manner of deriving benefit. My Tama, what's the reasoning? Mishum delo kativ baho achila. Why? Because we're saying in those cases, we don't have a prohibition of eating, but nevertheless, if you're deriving benefit, you would still get malchus. Metive. Gemara challenges this, however. Isi ben Yehuda is saying, Omer, minayim lebasar bechalav shahu asur. On what basis, I'll give you a challenge, that we say that milk with meat, okay, is forbidden. Ne'emar kan, because it says in one place, ki am kadoshata, that you are a holy people. But Ne'amar Lahalan, and it says in another place, Va'anshe Kodesh to you and me, that you shall be a holy people unto me. Okay? Namely, the rest of that Pasuk says, okay, namely, if we look at, uh, okay, Torah, the art school doesn't give a, a full Pasuk there, okay, in Hebrew, but it implies that Anshe Kodesh, meat torn in the field, should not be eaten. Malahalan Asur, Afkan Asur. So the same way here, the consumption of treif is uh, forbidden. So here also, we're going to say that uh, milk and meat cooked together is also forbidden. The Ainli Eleba Achila. But we imply this only in regards to mixing them for the purpose of eating. <laughs> but for benefit, how do we know this? Amart kalvachomer. We say it's by means of a kalvachomer. Uma orla shalone evda ba avera. Whereas orla, where we say, no sin really has been committed. Asura bahana'a. Okay, it's forbidden regarding benefit. Basar bechalav, milk and meat. Okay, or meat and milk. Shene avda bo avera, where there has been a transgression committed along with it. Eno din sheyehe asur bahana'a. Should it not be logical? that there also should be a prohibition, okay, in regarding benefit. And we'll just go over a tiny bit here. 
מעלה אורלה שכן לא הייתה לה שעת הכושר, but however there is an attempt to, uh, to be mafrich, to destroy that kava homer by saying where is orla, okay, where it does not have any opportunity, any time to be viable, okay, to be permissible, tomar bebasar bechalav, What are you going to say in regards to milk or meat and milk where each separately could have a time of being valid, acceptable? So the Gemara then attempts to come back and answer that deflection of the Kal V'chomer. Chomet B'Pesach Yochiach. Right? שהיה לו שעת הכושר ואסור בהנאה, אוקיי? Where חומץ and פסח, אוקיי, did have a time frame where it's permitted, אוקיי? Okay? Yet, we see that there's also a time when it's prohibited. מה לחומץ בפסח שכן אנוש קורית ואר בבשר בחלב שאינו אנוש קורית? So again, we see the challenge once more. So back and forth. And then he comes back again with Klai HaKerem Yochichu She'ein Anush Karet Ba'asur Ba. Okay, so we're going to pick up at that point tomorrow, okay, where again they're challenging back and forth the attempt to clarify that situation. Okay. So this is uh, Isi ben Yehuda challenging the Kalva Chomer and then deflecting the argument. Okay, and ultimately we'll come back to uh, this uh, buying back and forth. Okay? So we'll stop over there. Okay? Rabbi. Everybody yeah. Good morning. I had a question. Whoops. Okay. okay. On the first side, on, on, on Ahmed Aleph, uh, the Pasuk uh, stated, uh, let's see if I can find it quickly. On Kaf Dalet Ahmed Aleph? Yeah, on Kaf Dalet Ahmed. It stated, uh, well, the English, I remember, I can't remember, that, that it, it should be burned with fire. Uh, I forgot the exact word. Burned in, in the fire. Now, how else could something be burned if it wasn't burned in the fire? Is okay. there any other way of burning something? Okay, so I'll, I'll give you an example. All right, we, we, we were tr if we're trying to apply real that, that the destruction of chametz has to be, uh, uh, let me backtrack for a second. Right. I've, the Gemara's tried to show us that any love, <clears throat> all the loving, all the negative prohibitions in the Torah, the result is that their elimination is through burning. Right. That would include the example of chametz, because that's a love, a prohibition in the Torah, right? Right. We previously saw that only Rabbi Yehuda was the only one that held that. The rabbis, however, held that there were other means to eliminate chametz. You okay. could, for example, dump it into the sea. You could throw it in the air and let the wind right. carry it away. Yeah, but he's saying burning with fire. Yeah, it, it says, yeah, 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 yeah. Right, so that's why it's being challenged because by saying by saying that, that other prohibitions in the Torah do not require burning, that's what permits the rabbis to say that that chometz, okay, can be eliminated in another way. And therefore the Kodesh, okay, they're coming back with the example of notar, implying that only when it's consecrated uh, meat, okay? 
that is what it refers to when it says that it can only, it has to be eliminated through burning and not other prohibitions okay. in the Torah. So, so the double, so the double, it's a, like a double lotion that, that insists that that's uh, exclusively the method of uh, right. if, if I'm If I'm saying that that Kodesh implies that that Pasuk says to me that anything that the Torah prohibits can only be eliminated by burning, mm -hmm. as right. in the example of sanctified uh, meat. Right. Let's say that's left, okay? Mm -hmm. So that clearly has to be burnt. So I'm therefore trying to learn from that that any other prohibition also has to be destroyed, eliminated by burning, as in the example of chametz. Mm -hmm. Okay, but if I can give an exception to that and say, right. look, no, the Torah gives me a specific example of notar, okay, and that has to be burnt. Therefore, right. maybe it only applies to sacrifices and doesn't apply to other prohibitions in the Torah like chametz. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I can eliminate chametz in some other manner. For example, like the rabbis say, tossing it into the wind and letting, mm -hmm. tossing it in the air and letting the wind carry it. But that's not considered sreifa. What right. Bob is asking, why does it have to say sreifa ba'esh? Okay. Is that right, Bob? Right, for Aish right. So your question is is the more specifically lotion. why is Shreifa defined as the Aish use of fire? Right. Okay? Is there any other way of doing Shreifa besides Aish? No. I Not that I'm would, aware of. I thought this would be the fire on the altar itself, not just any fire. No. I don't think so. Think so either. Because what happens is you've got a situation, if if the meat is no tar, you can't burn it again on the altar. Only what goes on the altar is going to be for kodesh. So you have to take it and burn it elsewhere. You you take it off the altar, and you burn it in, uh, you know, in the azara. Uh, Right. In an area uh, aside from the Mizbeach. Yeah, but, but, but what prompted my question was the double Lashem when it said, Bo'eish Yisoreis. Why didn't you say Yechel Yisoreis? That, that's, you, okay, well, that's part of, you're, you're right, because the Gemara was raising the question, on the one hand, it says, Lo Yechel, Right. Why then do you need to have it said, you're so rafe? Right. Why do you need both? And if mm -hmm. you say it should be burnt, why do you need the language of lo yechel? Why do you need okay. the, the prohibition of not eating it? Mm -hmm. Can't you just, if it says it's got to be burnt, logic would dictate, therefore I can't, can't eat it. it. Right. Okay. That's the point. Okay. 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 Right. Thank you. Okay. okay, have a good day. Good Take care. Thank you.